I'm going to give you three reasons why I think Hercules Cap HTGC is and remains a good solid buy at these prices. Now we have a historical chart here for HTGC, Hercules. We can see during the global financial crisis they suffered and their prices have been volatile. But overall, if we look at this low orange line here or the blue line here, the overall earnings we can see have been trending upwards. And we can see that more or less the, the share price in black is following the earnings, which is good to see. Now we can see here that at the end at the start of 2023 the share prices was quite a bit lower than the blue line for earnings and we've seen the share price shooting up there to compensate now what can we see here we can see a dividend yield of nine percent now their dividend is better than this they often pay supplementary dividends they have done that also this quarter we can also see that they've got a 53 percent long-term debt to capital ratio which is pretty good. overall they've got about one to one debt to net asset value so they're not over leveraged i think by any stretch of the imagination now i like to also look at the analyst scorecards and i think fast graphs has done an absolutely fabulous job here of pulling in the analyst scorecard putting it here also on the screen for us to look at so when we look at the one year or the two year i like to look out for both of these uh, the one year has looked a bit spotty there 50 uh, percent hit at eight percent beat two years looks much better at 83 percent hit uh, and about one in seven miss now, what I want to do is I want to, to have a look at the analyst scorecard in a bit more detail. Now, we can see here also the, the misses on the one year uh, for earnings have been pretty much in the past since about 2018. Even through COVID, the analysts have had a pretty good job, done a pretty good job of getting it right. And similarly for the two and for estimates for the earnings, again, the misses were in the past and the company's done, been doing an incredibly good job, I think, of both delivering good guidance and the analysts have been doing a good job of actually picking up on this and making forecasts for two years forward. So I think we can take forecasts uh, with a reasonable amount of assurance here now what we're looking at is we're looking at is this a good nine percent yield uh, yes there can be some volatility here but what is the investment opportunity and what has been going on with this company lately? now for that i want to turn it to slightly interesting and slightly uh, aesthetically pleasing things report okay so here we are second quarter 2023 financial results now a couple of the obviously the heat lines here are worth noting they've got fabulous total investment income uh, a good increase there the, the net investment income which is the the important number here for me is is up it's an increase of nearly 90 percent year over year now one of the things that i love to see is this base contribution so they're now paying in 39 cents per share 40 cents per share so a small increase but that's not that common to see so i am loving seeing that now this is also really important as well the net interest the, the NII here provides, the net investment income provides 132 on this new base contribution. Now, what this means is it means that for every dollar they pay out here in contributions, their, their base contributions, their baseline dividends, they're actually covering that with a dollar NII. So in other words, things have to go back for them to not be able to cover their dividend. Now, in the meantime, what do they do with all this extra cash? Well, it gives them the opportunity to increase their lending. It gives them an opportunity to, to grow their business, but it also gives them an opportunity to return a supplement dividend that is a sort of a one-off. Now, you'll see that with a lot of EDCs, they'll pay a safe level of dividend, and then when things are good, they will pay uh, additional earnings out as supplement dividends as well. Okay, I am here in the team. Now, what we can see here is we can see a current dividend yield of about 9.8. We can see at a low point it was about 7% dividend yield and during the middle of a crisis it could even hit up to to sort of 10% dividend yield uh, but most of the time a good dividend yield being about 13% here for, for new purchases or 11% uh, and, and anywhere from about 8 to to 10 it seems to be a fairly normal fairly reasonable dividend yield for this company we begin to look at the analyst expectations i've got here the average the high and the low of the target stock prices from analysts and we can see since the beginning of 2020 we can see that the low here in orange has dropped from about 12.5 down to 10.5 and that now has been increasing quite strongly up to 13.5 now even though the the average here and the high targets haven't increased very much i think the fact that the the low end of the analyst estimates increasing strongly has been a positive sign for investors as well as a lot of the good news about the success of this company and the other companies in this industry and their portfolios is coming through particularly with the quarter turnings on as well okay so i'm back to fast graphs so i'm looking at the the nord pool and the earnings estimates here so over the last five years hercules capital has traded at about 10.2 times on a price to earning pool we can see at the moment it's trading very close to that at 9.98 times uh, and we can see that here with the black line basically hitting the the blue line here so you would say at this point i would say absolutely perfect price now what does that mean does it mean it's a buy or does it mean it's not a buy 
Well, there's a couple of things I think we need to look for. Number one, analysts six months ago for the 2023 year thought it was $1.72 earnings per share. The latest EPS estimates come out at $1.99, so we've seen some substantial improvements there. Now, for the 2024 financial year, again, $1.67 six months ago, up to $1.93. In the most recent set of estimates released by the analysts, that's looking very... Now, the 2023 financial year here, we've seen a, a protected 34% increase in earnings and a, a slight slippage back to 2024. So this is large tied to the rise interest rate. As the interest rates have risen, the, the large number or large portion of the floating loans that Hercules Capital uh, provides, that is basically all ratcheting up and increasing their net interest income. Now, if we look at this out till the end of 2024, we can see, I would say, relatively anemic growth here. So it has an estimated total annualised rate of return of 16%, uh, and we can see that the annualised rate of return without dividends is pretty much half of that. So there's a small expectation here is some capital appreciation and of course on top of this you're going to have your dividend yield to bore you to, to keep you floating now what does that mean for you it means that this is a nice income play i don't think there's any margin of safety here i think if you had been buying it in march at about 7.5 times in a price to earning pool, i think there you would have a much better margin of safety and this would have been a much better investment at those i think here yes you could simply start a position it could be a small position and waiting for a pullback to add to that position at the moment though i think there are possibly some other better stocks out there but this is absolutely an abs a fine stock a good stock i think there's a lot of volatility possible here prices could go up prices could go down but I think for a 9% dividend yield that's being well covered by the NII for this company, with expectations of this as strong continued growth in the earnings, I think at the moment this is a good sole hold for me. What do you think? Hit me up in the comments down below with your thoughts on this.